So this is the most infamous steel cage you planned up, huh? Try to kill us? Look, it's not that quite bad once you actually stepped inside the thing, but it's actually amusing when you're inside. Yeah, if I'm planning my own death trap for a funeral. Okay, it's quite bad, but you guys admit, you guys put on an astonishing pay-per-view match in the main event for the world title. I gotta congratulate you, Brian, on your biggest effort. But I'm also glad that you picked this stipulation for the world title, Mike, because you guys are gonna put on a hell of a show. I guarantee it, and you're gonna fight inside this piece of junk. Oh yeah, it's gonna bring all the views and ratings. I guarantee it. So, I gotta ask, what is this thing even made out of? Oh, it's just nothing. I found some scrap from the WWE warehouse, and I gotta say, this from right here is from the old school WWE cage. And the big whole set, a roof, is from the ECW. And it's a bit of WCW right there, and a little bit I found from a junkyard uh, digging through it. Oh, come on, this is ridiculous. Come on, you guys are gonna do fine. This is actually quite ridiculous, but you sure everybody's gonna be safe? Yeah, man. You know, you gotta file a lawsuit here. It'll be fine. It's Ohio versus everything, and so we're live from Cleveland. I'm your host, Mr. Broken Air. Welcome to another episode of BCW. Falling out from last pay-per-view, notice defiance. We go from Halloween to Turkey Day, and we're all craving for some action in Turkey. But tonight, main event. Well, as we get to that, Baron Blade is here. He's live, and he's going to be in front of our faces, announcing for the pay-per-view and what is going to be happening for the next couple of weeks. But also he has announced that at the Michael Wolf has invoked his rematch clause against the new World Heavyweight Champion Brian Azrael in a Strap Trap submission styled steel cage match. It's going to be huge. And speaking of huge, we got a battle royale to determine who will be the next BCW Women's Champion. And a little side order from what happened at Defiance. But now let's hit down to ringside for our contenders week. Alrighty folks. We're not done. That's not the only contenders that we're going to have for tonight. As we have a triple threat match for a number one contender spot for the Intercontinental Championship who will be facing Tyler Arkinson in the next pay-per-view. Here comes a man named Feck West who went through a hell of a war in a tables, ladders, and chairs. Oh my! Alongside with his fellow man, Leo West against the Cheeseburger World Order for the tag titles and as you can tell Leo West is out of an injury from what happened at the pay-per-view. Feck West is going to have to go on his own. He has asked for this solo star to be the solo star and he's going to prove himself in this number one contendership whoever comes past through him because whoever goes through his past he still will with Arasta and no matter what titles they go for everybody's going to be put on lockdown and they get in his way. But we're also going to talk about, speaking of the Intercontinental title, Brian Azrael. Now, he's going through some things right now, as he was the guy that tried to be the first man to make history in BCW. He wanted to not only become the Intercontinental Champion, but also the World Heavyweight title. But the World Heavyweight title, according to him, doesn't mean nothing. But, will it mean anything when he goes in tonight's event inside the steel cage against Michael Wolfe? But here comes another man who was a part of Defiance's Trick or Treat Battle Royale, and that is Killswitch. Killswitch has been on a warpath to try to claim a championship here. He is in the gold rush, procuring anything in his path. He's already procured other places and other promotions, but he wants to make a statement, direct a message to everybody in BCW that he's the Punisher, and he will punish anybody on his path just to grab the gold. He's like Indiana Jones. He has to go through all the obstacles once he grabs the gold. 
But you know, Feck West is going to have to go through this man. And whoever is going to be ahead, because this is a triple threat action. Anybody else could be a part of this. So it'll be Feck West taking on Kill Switch. And oh, by the way, folks, we're going to be running out through all the break, all the championship matches for what happened on the other pay per views. Uh, Defiance. It was a quite of a, an event. It was some few title changes that happened, and also we still got some still our champions. And we're going to be running through that through the course, and we're going to see who also is a part of the Intercontinental title match. I'm quite stoked to what it's going to be. As we're looking on and waiting for our opponent, and here comes our next contestant. Last but not least, it is Soul Amazing. Now, Soul Amazing, fun fact, was supposed to be part of the Battle Royal, but he came in with the flu at the last second. So we have to call in sick and then got replaced by one of the men in the matchup. So that's why he wouldn't be able to not. But he's got a new look as of late. He's going to send people to Suplex City since he is a Paul Heyman guy. But this beer drinking redneck is going to have a set of example. He wants to get back into the Intercontinental title picture. The title that he was supposed to grab. But then Brian Azrael swept the floor off of him and got him sober. But you know... Soul Amazing is only powerful when he's drunk. But how powerful will he be? Can he survive this matchup and become a number one contender for the Intercontinental title? All the answers will be answered. Right as we get into this matchup, referee, ring the bell. As we get underway for the triple threat match here, and we're going to talk about some other matches that we had still. Speaking of championship matches, we're going to talk about the World Television title. Ben Rivers versus Sheep. Sh oh my gosh, by the way. Killswitch is trying to kill a man's career, man. Whoa. Now Killswitch is trying to... Oh, look at this. Uh, we got here's an uh, exchange in chaos between Killswitch and... Ooh, smack that taste off of him into next week. It's so amazing. Returns the frame. Hey, with an ambush. And that was the set now. Oh, trying to go... Oh, it smacks him across the face. Oh my gosh, in perfection. Trying to get a him a concussion. Trying to, trying to have him on the shelf as well. But we're actually here talking about the World Television title. Ben Rivers fighting off against Sheep Shifter. And little excuses from Ben Rivers every time I find out that he wants to make up, that he makes up excuses every time he loses the belt or he loses the match. It's kind of a hypocritical, I can say. And he goes around talking about that he got rigged by losing a match fair and square. But the other other people he doesn't find that that got rigged in other promotions of his own and he felt like he got ripped off against the sheep for the world television title that's why the sheep is the intercontinental champion i'm sorry world television champion as we speak oh my gosh and again kill switch has been all nothing but superman punches and it looks like kill switch is so amazing going to be having to team up against feck west for now Feck West is going to have to be the lone wolf for tonight. Since, remember, Leo West is not here tonight because of an injury that happened to the table's ladders. And chairs match! And look at cleaning house! Of kill switch is so amazing. This band could actually taste everybody's medicine and put words in our mouth. Prove that he could be a solo star. And look at this now. Cross on breaking the soul. Amazing. Trying to make it to the ropes as possibly as he can. But no soul. Amazing. He's too powerful. He's too strong for a big husky man. And Kill Switch is coming back into the ring. It looks like we're going to see a Chulo on his soul. But no. Here we go. From behind a back souffle. We're going to see from here now. Look at Kill Switch. Not Kill Switch. Soul. Amazing. Trying to uh, Get an attack from one of them with a maneuver, but he finally got out of it and just run rushing him into the Oh my gosh, kill, kill, kill switch, calm down. Kill switch. Oh no. This is the maneuver that could end it right here. Top one on the hook on pile driver. And now could be in here. One, two, no, just a near fall. But also we gotta talk about so one of the most one of the most infamous women's title matches that we ever come through. And Soul Amazing was shot to the face with a Luthes press. And look at Soul Amazing trying to end it right here. But Feck West able to save Kill Switch for now with a Pele kick to the arm. And it was just here. Oh, from above and above to infinity and beyond to the ground. 
and kill switches lurking on to his opponent. And look at this here now from out of nowhere. Gonna lock it in. Brimasta! Trying to go for the pin now. Effect West grabbed onto the foot of the ropes. It's a very smart tactic. And kind of angered a little bit of kill switch. And look at this now. It's gonna try for more damage and trims of his head. And a crimson mast effect West. Good night. Sleep tight. Here we go. Cover now. Soul. Here we go. Soul Amazing gets right back in the ring and breaks everything up. We've been mostly seeing Soul Amazing and Kill Switch been mostly working together. At the same time, they have to fight one another. I mean, every man for themselves. And drive the. And here we go now. Soul Amazing turning his attention. Could end it right here. Could it, here we go. Soul Stunner turns to the attention of the Fact West as he is up. Fact West now gripping on his neck, holding him into position. And now look at the kick to the big section. Driving her to Karana. Could, you could pin right there the kill switch. He's right there in the open. You could get your opportunity right there. Cover now. One, two. Oh, just a. That looked like a one count, but the bad idea to pin so amazing. I think he chose his. I mean, he chose this choice wisely. And now he's just get sent outside to recuperate. And now it's down to. It's been mostly so amazing. A kill switch that has been on in a uh, on a war path through one another. These guys fighting off one on one. Here we go. The Soul Amazing with the cover. One hooks the leg. Just a w near fall. And now here we go. Back to the ring. Feck West. Trying to wipe the blood off the wound. That's a deep cut right there. Soul Amazing now. Go to the straight haymakers. Right across the face of Kill Switch. Look at this press. From out of nowhere now. Feck West turned his attention. But it got stopped by St Soul Amazing. And now Soul Amazing turns around. No. Oh, back behind. Straight haymaker, but oh, got a clock into the left hay haymaker. Dodge it quite. Well. These guys are exchanging one another and gets one shot in. That could have gassed out Soul Amazing, but goes for a desperate pin attempt here. Coming down one. Oh, oh, but Fat West was able to get out of the just oh, proving his dominance in this matchup. He goes to the back behind, turns him around. What can to see here? Oh, here we go now. Trying to go for a cross out breaker this time. He got it locked in this time. A kill switch was able to break it off. Able to make the save, and now Feck West has been cleaning house. Oh, oh, drop the dime. He's about to hit the 619. But oh, here we go instead. Kill switch. It's gonna. Oh my gosh. Like I said before, he's trying to send this man to the shelf along with his partner, his homie. And now here we go. Pin attempt. One, two. And, oh, that's a one. Soul Amazing trying to prove his dominance as well. Soul Amazing now. Go for the back behind. Oh, God. Ooh, what a shot. Got a two piece him with a chicken McNugget combo from McDonald's and now stands him with the cover into the corner over and over and over. And she's trying to open him up as well. And look at now, so amazing. Kill switch is bloodthirsty right now. The referee here with no cover one, two, and so amazing kicks out. Oh, whatever from Feck West from behind, gonna grab him from out of nowhere, get him up in the air, part of him. Goes for the roll up though. Cover. One, two, and a three. And Feck West gets a shot for the Intercontinental title. My goodness, Feck West. Congratulations to one half of Air Rasta for making a statement that he could do it not only in the tag team division, but in the solo division. He's going to claim gold, and he's moving on. And he's going to be doing it for him and Leo West when he comes back from a cut recovery in no time. But ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, speaking of Contenders Week, eight women battle royale over the top rope. Which one of these women will go on to face the new champion, Brooke Danger? Don't go now anywhere. But I don't know what type of English was that, but we got some treat for y'all. Some D Eva's action. And by the way, this is going to be an over the top rope battle royale. It's quite different from the last battle royale from Defiance. But we got some fresh faces that's looking. One of these women is going to have to try to throw Brooke Danger off of her A game because she's the queen of the women's division right now. And we're going to talk about that. We'll, we talk, we'll talk about it when we get to the matchup. But here comes Ashley Rivers. A familiar face that you saw that defines when she was cosplaying as Alexa Bliss. Ashley Rivers is the most hatriotic. If once you're a Rivers, 
You, you got a target on your back. It doesn't even matter if you got a championship around your waist or not. You, Whit Air, Air Rivers, you're expecting a lot of hate. And, but haters love Ashley Rivers, according to her. But Ashley Rivers is trying to get back into the title picture after Momo Ishii is finally out of the fray. She is actually glad that Momo Ishii is no longer the champion because she feels that the, that the championship was held hostage because of her. So now... <coughs> We're gonna get some fresh blood right now. We already got it with Brooke Danger. So let's see what's going on. Could this be one of the, the newest talent for BCW? Everybody can be signed in for BCW. But I've heard Candy Vega is also a part of this, and she is finding way. She has gone through a tough time. Everybody's gone through. Everybody from the Vegas have been going through Vegas, Corruption Core. They have been nothing but mental breakdowns for whatever type of reason for losing the gold that they previously won but here comes a returning face to BCW Elizabeth Blade we have not seen this pretty little thing for a while now as she showed her case her abilities and she's quite impressive in the ring and she was able to get off in defiance but she didn't really win but you gotta give credit that she fought on as, as hard as she could as long as she can to try to get an opportunity to, to sweep Brooke Danger off of her feet. And with Brooke Danger though, she's gonna have a she's got a target on her back. And everybody is not too happy with what Brooke Danger did to Sassy Vega a couple weeks ago when she cashed in her money in the bank and ruined all hopes and dreams for her. And that's what happened at Defiance. Sassy Vega was so close, so close to retrieving reclaiming the title that she lost but then Brooke Danger with a top rope hurricanrana a devastating maneuver knocked her lights out Sassy Vega couldn't was not the same again but ladies and gentlemen we got ourselves it looks like a new face in the horizon ladies and gentlemen this is Christy Animate she is well, actually, this is a he is she type of situation because this person is a gender shifter, a shape shifter, whatever they prefer. I mean, we already got a sheep shifter in BCW. We don't need somebody from beyond the multiverse. We already got enough of that. But Kill Animate, though, on the other hand, this woman, we have not seen much of her. She, all we know is that her, probably her favorite is either two things Transformers. Or Power Rangers. She looks more like a Power Ranger. You know, go, go, killer anime. And, but, do not do not make her costume fool you. I mean, Comic-Con is right around the corner. But, don't let her costume fool you. She might look like a superhero, but she could get real nasty in the ring. And we're about to see that tonight. How nasty can killer anime go through you? And this has been a long-awaiting debut. She's been waiting anxiously to get into the ring and showcase what she's all about. She's been wanting to be a part of BCW for quite a while, and she's finally getting to here tonight when she gets in, step inside, and could she be the one to be able to be worthy to defeat Bro Brooke Danger? We don't know. That's, that's up to what's going to happen at the pay-per-view. And, and don't and also, don't forget, Baron Blade, after this match, will be here to address things that are going to be quite of an interesting note it's going to be involving the pay-per-view it's going to be involving a couple of weeks so you're going to have to sit back relax and sit on tight because you glow your glue your eyes on the television screen because it's about to be serious but ladies and gentlemen and we got ourselves a a show off here tonight talk set who went from being a demon assassin to the biggest damn draw here in BCW. She quite put it on wide of a, a good bad influence. She's a bad influence and she's did a hell of a job at the pay-per-view. She almost came real close to becoming a champion. Of becoming an opportunist for the BCW women's title. And she was in I think about the final four. Final four or final five. She was able to hold her own. But Toxet there's a future for every one of these ladies in BCW. 
and I cannot wait for the, what the, these new eras are going to teach this old era for BCW. We got some old faces, you know, Ashley Rivers, Elizabeth Blade, but now we got some new flesh blood. You know, blood is thicker than water, and I don't mean family related. Whatever could be some necessary for what these women will will do, to do in the ring. And if you want to settle your problems, the squared circle is where it's at. The solution. So we wait out for our next promo next uh, person as we get underway for our next contestant. For our battle royale to determine who will face Brook Danger at the pay-per-view. Whoever could it be, Brook Danger's got another thing coming. Uh-oh, who's this ex indeed? Who is this next opportunist in the matchup? Oh, who look who it is! It is a former BCW women's... Well, actually, no, not former BCW, oh, my bad. But a contender, Candy Vega, who was one of the women that tried to dethrone Momoishi when she was a champion. Candy Vega, she tried to do the best that she could possibly can to try to become the next champ, to try to dethrone, can't, dethrone her, dethrone, you know, you know, yours truly, Brooke Danger. She tried to help out her daughter. But then her daughter suffered the most disappointing, I wouldn't say embarrassing, but I would, I'm not going to say this, but it was quite humiliating to see her what happened at the, at the pay-per-view. All the Vegas are devastated, but they always avenge the fallen. And, the, and it's going to be the end game for Brooke Danger, whoever one of these women is going to be, when they headline at the pay-per-view. Not a main event that maybe maybe down the line we'll see a main event, but, but for the women's title, whatever that case may be, but guarantee this, Brooke Danger. It's not. It's not going to be. It's not going to be safe for the fame for her. I, I, and I'm quite interested in what Maria Slugger is going to do. Maria Slugger is all up on the grill, and is she waiting for an opportunity for Brooke Danger, or is she waiting for an opportunity? for anybody to win the title. I don't understand. But nonetheless, here comes another woman right now as we speak. And who could this be? Who is this next lovely lady to come in? Oh, gosh. We've heard about this gal. This is the undeniable Brandy Ryder. She is all about the wit and spotlight. She's all about the fame. She's all about the money. She's all about rubbing it into your face and gloating about it because she's damn well better than you. And you look at her. She kind of like the same size as Manaya. Look at her. She's kind of six foot. A little bit. But who knows. But enough talk about what's going on with the women's title match. We got to get down to what other matches this week. But we talked about the Intercontinental. We talked about the World Television. We talked about the Women's Battle Royal. Let's get down to the men's uh, Trick or Treat Battle Royale. Let's talk about how Justin Payne was able to win the Battle Royale to be the most unexpected person to win, the least favorite to win, because he's nothing but a, a slave. He's nothing but a puppet to the Cheeseburger World Order. And I'm surprised, even though he was helping Joey Scampoli stay in as much as he could to inflict so much pain onto him, but at the same time, he's got to do what Joey Scampoli has to tell him to do. So then it came down to him, Joey Scampoli, and John Constantine. I gotta say, John Constantine, he deserves a shot in any given moment. And I could give him a shot at any given time. Whatever, whatever the case may be, John Constantine doesn't deserve a shot at the belt. And that's just the fact of life. So whatever... <coughs> With that being said, another, uh, last but not least, it was the heavyweight title. It was Brian Azrael versus Michael Wolf. Now, Michael Wolf suffered the same fate as Lucius Lambert. Everybody was confused. It's like, okay, Michael Wolf just started, and then all of a sudden he got the title ripped away from him. From out of nowhere. We don't have no idea what's, what cause of it, but I can tell you this. I guarantee that Michael Wolf is invoking his rematch clause tonight, and it's in the main event. It's a huge main event tonight, and it's going to be settled. And he went over to Baron Blade and talked about this, 
But speaking, before we get to that, speaking of somebody, we gotta talk about this new fresh face. This is Yosef Balmer. She's bringing the, the Ness in Yosefness tonight. She could be on her way. She is a daredevil. She is a risk taker and she will do anything at all. And she won't let go. This woman right here is all about bringing the odds and I don't know what kind of a, what kind of a suicidal missions that she's on about. At least she's not going to pull a sassy vegan and try to target the monster like she's damn, some damn slayer. But right back into the heavyweight match. Heavyweight title match is about the main event. Michael Wolf, Brian Azrael, steel cage match. It's going to be crazy. I'm going to say, I got to say, well, I'm hoping to expect something out of this match. I don't care who wins or who lo losses. Somebody's going to end up being the bitch. And somebody is going to end up with a title. Let's just say, let's just put that there. I'm not saying they are a bitch. I'm just saying they're going to be tapped out. But it looks like we're going to get to our last but not least contender for this eight bout battle royale over the top rope. And she is the most devastating monster to walk amongst this earth. And that is Manaya Tandria. The goddess of hell. The real demon assassin from death on arrival. We are not sure where this woman came from. We know for sure that she has been causing a lot of trouble, stirring the pot. The reason why Sassy Vega is no longer the BCW Women's Champion, and she's infuriated for whatever reason. Manaya Tandria doesn't give a damn what you are. She has no sympathy. She has no mercy. She will do whatever it takes. And she, last week, if you guys remember, she had no temptations of being associated with those two. She's out for gold, just like everybody else. And we're going to find out for these eight women when they have to only... Throw them over the top rope to make it simple. But I'm not going to root for anyone. If Manaya Tundra ever came to my face, I'm going to have to say yes because I don't want to be one of Death of Arrival's, you know, victims. But you know, that one stamps for sure. I'm going to be quite interested in what's going to be happening for the cut for Baron Blade, though. Baron Blade. <coughs> It's going to be talking about a lot of stuff for the pay-per-view. It's going to be involving the championships, the pay, the something, something, tr something treat delivering. It's going to be, you know, it's on the house. And Baron Blade is going to be the one raising the stakes. Oof! I wonder how that's going to be go out. Look at this, everybody, like a cult. Raising their arms alongside with her. Manaya Tantria is devastating. She's a monster. And le and and I'm surprised she didn't even fucking injure Lexi. Lexi is in the hospital right now. Speedy recovery for her. And we know we know for sure she is gonna be getting an opportunity down the road. Well, you know, she fought out the most hearted, the hope most hard, hardest fought that I have ever seen from her, anyone. She went up against not only Manaya Tundria, not only Candy Vega, not only Momo Ishii, but Maria Slugger, a lot of these women. And Lexi was the newcomer. She was in the final two, and she came really close, but she slipped and made one mistake. That's all that happens in life. And we know to how to forgive that and learn from it or run from it. But speaking of, here we go now, Battle Royales. We start off Candy Vega and Ashley Rivers, Elizabeth Blade and and Toxet, we got, oh yeah, no, Toxet is focusing her attentions on, on her, and you know, she walks into the corner. We got a lot of action going off right now for that eight man bat over the top rope battle royal, to determine who's gonna go over, over and out. And just like the most famous, the most greatest actual TV show 
the most ex extreme challenge. Don't get eliminated. Don't. I'm just saying. But here we go now. Who's gonna get? Who's gonna be the lucky one out? Out of all these ladies, they're all fighting for this. Is and by the way, uh, what in the world? What in the world did Brady try to do for over there? But it don't matter. She's trying to yeet herself over the top rope, eliminate herself. But that could be bad. Actually, Rivers is struggling over there. Uh oh, and here she gets thrown to the top rope, but she's able to hold in still. Ashley Rivers trying to fight off as much as he can. Elizabeth Blade now. She could be in trouble. Here we go. Oh, a lot of these women are in trouble right now. Candy Vega almost got. Oh, back fist. It's the monster didn't even face right through it. That's the Rivers again struggling to try to fight over. And there we go. Fights it off in a bit. Oh, and a jam. Rice shot to the face. My goodness. This is just a lot of action. A lot of these women fighting for pride, fighting for reputation. Who is the let me know in the comments down below. Who you guys who you guys and gals going for? Who is worthy to become the women's champion? The fight broke danger at the next pay-per-view. Oh, and a right hand up to, to Brandy by Toxet. And here we go. Oh, yo. Something happening over in the corner. Manaya Tundria. Oh, trying to go with cross body, but missed terribly. Killer Adamant, though, fights out of her struggles. But Toxet could be on her way to out of the ring. And Toxet could hold off as much as he can. And it was a Yosef. Now try to get Candy Vega out of here. She could be the first one out. Try to fight as much as you can. Oh my goodness. This is all just craziness right now. Here we go. Oh, Killer Anime now sitting in the corner. Being destroyed. But Manaya, Manaya just doing as much. She's a big woman. She could throw off all of these women with ease if she could. But we'll see her now. All right, there we go. Flatliner. The talk set. It rolls all over by the Ashley Rivers pinning it off for some wrong reason. And now Yosef is stopping one hold of Candy Vega. And remember, this is Candy Vega's idea of bringing some of her backup plan to, to try to get Brooke Danger to one of these women. And look at Candy Vega! Oh! That is not a plan that she was actually thinking of. But well, she's eliminated. And this is the all day jaw food from what happened at the pay-per-view. Look at this, the Ashley Rivers sending her to the to the corner, drop the dime. 619! Elizabeth Blade now about to be topped over the top rope by the top set. It could be all of her hopes and dreams ended right here. It could all end right here if she could just stay on and hang on a little bit. And she's able to Oh my gosh! Killer Animate just killed Manaya Tantra with a flip pile driver. That's that's strength. And oh red arrow! A corkscrew to Manaya, holding off her own, doing a pretty good job to take down a six-footer. Oh, the Olympic slump. To the corner now, throws them over. Oh, now we go to the back of my head. Look at the talk set. Now wrench of the arm, pop of the socket. Oh, nicely done from Yosef. And Yosef now gets thrown over the top rope. Gets over the over. Pale kick by Elizabeth. DDT the Manaya by by yours truly over there, Brandy. I just gotta remember all these names. This is like this new. Oh, attitude adjustment by Elizabeth Lee. And then what's this? Our kettle adamant trying to take Toxet. Picks him, picking a fight with him. Oh, dropping the scorpion by Ashley Rivers. And it was in from out of nowhere. Hold Mega Driver! And what could happen right now? Wait a minute. Oh, Manaya could be almost in trouble. But look at Tox. Oof. Brandy could be in trouble right now. Look at this there. Oh no. Could be all in trouble right now. But look at Manaya. She's struggling too. And look at that kill out of it. Oh no, Toxet is eliminated. But what about over Yosef? She's out of here. Manaya eliminated as well. Two eliminations at the same time. And now we're down to five. What is could be happening? Oh, wait a minute. What's going on backstage? What's going on with the state ramp? Manaya's on her way out of here. Oh my gosh, this is the former champion. Remember. She's the one that cost her the heavyweight, the he women's title. And look at that. Oh my gosh. And now we're going to get some security right now. This is getting crazy. These two women are going at each other. This is insanity from Sassy Vega. And now look at this. Now. These girls are just ambushing one another. This is chaotic. Might as well call this damn company beyond chaotic wrestling. Gotta get these in, under control right now. 
while a women's match is happening right now and these two ladies are just just doing all sorts of damage to each other doing all sorts of chaos sassy vega it's got a she's like kill bill she's got a hit list and she's gonna gun down everybody that screwed her out of the belt and remember she can't be a part of this because she lost her opportunity for the the women's title and look at ashley rivers could lose her opportunity as well if she lives with her blade, could throw her over, flip over like a pancake, it could be over for her. Ashley Rivers trying as much as she can. What could this be? Oh, and she saves herself from doom. And now Elizabeth Blade. Oh, forearm shot blocked. Miss confusion. Here we go. And now here we go. So, oh, nice forearm shot. What? No, what? The kill anime. Doing some anime. Oh, that's super kick. Elizabeth Blade could be on her way to be coming. Our champion, probably. Uh oh, Ashley Rivers is out of here. And now we're down to four, ladies and gentlemen: Yosef, Brandy, Kill Anime, and Elizabeth Blade. One of these gals is on their way to becoming the BCW Women's Champion Contender. Whoever fights Book Danger at the pay per view. And was this out of nowhere? Ooh, nicely done by Yosef. Elizabeth Blade and Yosef, and super kick sends Killer Adamant over the top rope. Can we get a replay of that? Nicely done one more time. And a frog splash, but good angle. Perfect timing for Yosef to get her photo bomb in. But now it's down to final three. Elizabeth Blade, Yosef, and Brandy. It was Elizabeth Blade could be all over her for her. Blade stays in it. This could be bad. She's trying to hold on, fighting as much as she can. And now trying to throw her off. Oh, but wait a minute. If she saves her from Doom, though. And now starting to throw her into the corner and look at all nothing but rope. What could be bad over here? Throws over the top rope. Oh, she's trying to go for something here. Elizabeth Blade? No. She got dropped with a flatliner. And look at. All oh, craziness forever undeniable as, as Brandy Ryder is. And now Brandy Ryder is going to go for something here. Falconaru. Yosef taking some little bit of uh, breather. Right? What, is this? what is he receiving from this big woman? Oh, Lucy wasn't home for that timing. But Elizabeth Blade is still in the fight. But was it? Oh, got clocked in the face. Uh oh, could be bad right here. She makes one mistake and she could slip. Oh, back kick into the corner. Oh, what? What in the world? Galloping like a horse, but she be able to fight it off. And ever since go from out of nowhere, snap souffle. But Elizabeth Blade could do her bidding. Throws over the oh, throws over the corner. Elizabeth Blade, no. When, oh, these women are just. Fighting for the pride, fighting for what's right, fight for your life. Jermaine Souffle, the Souffle. And now, it's and now, Yo turns our attention to Yosef. It's gonna be bad. Throws up with the top rope. Could it be it? Could it be it for Yosef? No, she hangs it as much as she could. And now, what she go for here? Oh my God! The gonna try to throw over. And no, gosh. The mistakes were made. Her fate, fate was sealed. Thrown over the top rope. And now we're down to Yosef and Brandy Ryder. Which one of these gals is going to make their way to glory? Pokadaru! Could be all for, all for the opportunity for the, one of these gals to be coming. A chance to gold, to fame. And, and Brandy's all about that. And look at this pushing off. Could get her opportunity. Throws over the top rope. But no, still in it. Yosef, oh wait a minute, oh my gosh! That's it, that's it, set her out of here. That's just enough. And now this could be all it for her. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And don't let the, your ass, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Oh good lord, that could have got some daydreams. She's counting sheep. And Brandy Ryder is your contender for the women's title. My goodness, folks. What a match we saw. This woman who's starting off undeniable 
has got her wishes come true, and she's looking to prove that she's the damn champion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're just getting right off now. Baron Blade is here, and we're gonna find out what does he have in store for tonight and the pay-per-view. We'll go back to moments ago, which has happened with a congratulations to Blandy Ryder making her first debut well known. And you know, this man right here, Baron Blade, has been watching a lot of happen and what's been going on for quite some time. For all of these men and women in the future of BCW, but we gotta find out what's gonna be happening. He's excited he's always excited to see everybody in attendance. I'm not sure if these people are actually excited for this man. Baron Blade has a history of you being a cocky prick. He's known for being an undeniable person, but you know, this person right, but Baron Blade is a new man, and he wants to be the same route as, as Big Bahan. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna see what he's exactly gonna be talking about here tonight. And get underway right now. You know, fun fact about Cleveland, Ohio, I usually have my family cookouts and my holiday specials here from time to time, but we're not talking about that. We're gonna be talking about some serious business. We're talking about what has been going on for the past couple of weeks and what's going to be happening at the pay per view. And by the way, congratulations to Brandon Ryder for putting out a hard fought battle in the Battle Royal and becoming the number one contender for the BCW Women's title. Speaking of titles, I know you guys want this scoop. I know what's been going on and I've been watching every single moment of it. So, what is going to happen in that main event? It will be Michael Wolfer, Brian Azrael, and Steel Cage. But as well as Bren Rivers and Brian Aswell will be invoking their rematch clauses next week. And as well as the Cheeseburger World Order, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. This is some been the Cheeseburger controversy. And they're not going to get away with it by having no tag team title defense. Because they're going to be defending their titles at the Go Home Show. And they're going to be defending against whoever wins the tag team number one contendership for next week. But Corruption Core going to be taking on the Prototype Knights. So good luck, Cheeseburger World Order. You're going to need it. Well, speaking of luck, for our next pay-per-view known as Battlefront, there's going to be a series, a Survivor Series, for men and women. And it's for the women that has gone on for what's been happening for a lot of couple of weeks. We don't know that the Vegas, Sassy Vega, and Katie Vega are going to be in the Survivor Series against Brooke Danger, Maria Slugger, and Manaya Tundra, and a fourth pick of their own. As well as the men's, the Cheeseburger World Order are going to fill in those four slots. And Ben versus Ben Rivers and his son, and a two people of their choosing as well. And here's a stipulation as well. I've been hearing a lot from Justin Payne wanting to get out of the Cheeseburger Order. Well, guess what? If Ben Rivers wins the Survivor Series, Justin Payne will be out of the Cheeseburger World Order. Oh my gosh. What announcements that has been, this been made. And we're gonna cover all of the things that have just been transpired here tonight. Well, what he just made, this is huge. We're going to finally get ourselves a Survivor Series type of pay-per-view. But speaking of championship matches, the main event, Michael Wolf taking on Brian Azrael inside of a steel cage for the heavyweight title. You do not want to miss this. You are not going to go anywhere. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We're live here in Cleveland, Ohio, and we got to talk about when Baron Blade has just made a lot of announcements. Not only are we going to have two title matches for next week, but the Cheeseburger World Order is going to be in some serious, serious trouble. Because whoever wins between Corruption Core and the Prototype Knights, they're going to be defending their titles at the pay-per-view. Not the pay-per-view. They're going to be defending at the go-home show. And it's going to be no controversy with that. And also, there's going to be a Survivor Series type matches for both men and women. So it's going to be an eight men and eight women Survivor Series style elimination matches. So as for the women's, it's going to be Sassy Vega and Candy Vega choosing who they want to be part of it versus Manaya, Tundria, Candy, no, no, Candy, uh, Brooke Danger and Maria Slugger. And as far as the men's, the men's portion, 
I've been hearing the cheeseburger world order is going to be a part of that. But who will be aligning with Ben and Josh Rivers to just to make sure the cheeseburger world order is ended once and for all? And it's going to be good news for Justin Payne because if Justin Payne happens to have the cheeseburger world order lost, then Justin Payne will no longer be a part of the cheeseburger world order. But I have also been hearing that Joey Scampoli is trying to be a lineup self with Justin Payne. I've heard some words for, from him. Justin Payne is being awarded that the cat suit will be no more if Justin Payne can win a title at the next pay-per-view battlefront. And oh my goodness, a lot of uh, things are going to be happening. But speaking of matches, we, Michael Wolf is already in the ring. And Brian Azrael is also in the ring as well for our heavyweight title big main event here in Cleveland, Ohio, inside the 15-foot-high steel cage. And I've been and I've been uh, a moment ago earlier tonight. These guys have been talking about this structure. And remember the last time that this structure was in high, in there, a certain two rivals was also a part of it. John Constantine and Cole Quinn were a part of that chaos. But what kind of chaos will these guys will be making? And I've heard some shots were been fired with Brian Azrael and Michael Wolf. And Michael Wolf is saying that Brian Azrael loses the belt. Candy Vega is going to be calling Michael Wolf daddy. And that is, uh, I don't even know if that's even PG. And we're not a PG show. We're not like. SCXW We're not like SCSW We're not like PSW We're not like SXW We're not like the heel red wrestling We're not like any of these other promotions This is Beyond Championship Wrestling And I can tell you this They will never book as such a main event like this Steel Cage Heavyweight title on the line Brian Ezra, Michael Wolf Heading head to head Who is going to suffer by tapping out and forced to lose their belt or retain the belt. Whatever is going to be happening, all of it is going to be clashing one another. And I'm just getting word now. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is. Oh, what a treat. Ladies and gentlemen, Baron Blade has informed that Justin Payne has a, already made up his mind of who title is he going for. And I'm also hearing that the return of Cole Quinn after his condition from the last man standing match, he is cleared 100% and we will be seeing him very soon. Oh my gosh, I, I cannot wait for Battlefront. I cannot wait. The Cheeseburger World Order, it's time for them to taste their own medicine. There's going to be title matches every week. Oh my gosh, I am I'm shaking. I'm shaking. But I'm also hearing that the women's title is also being defended as well. Oh my gosh, referee, ring that bell. Oh boy, and here we go. Main event time for the World Heavyweight title. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here live. Baron Blade, we just covered, we just recapped or whatever, all the stuff that he's been saying for the, for quite of a while. We also had a, eight women over the top row battle royal that determined who the BCW Women's Champion uh, number one contender will be, and that will be Brandon Ryder, and we see she going to be taking on Brooke Danger at the Go Home Show. Ooh, this is going to be big. As well as some matches are going to be confirmed for Survivor Series. It's not Survivor Series. Battlefront. Two <coughs> Survivor Series style ma type elimination matches. World Heavyweight title match. We got an intercontinental title match. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. What's gonna be happening? I'm quite excited and quite ready for what's to come. But what you never know, stake here. Oh my gosh, driving into the to the corner. What also could be a stake there right here as we speak. And here we go now. What could be a, here we go? Nicely done. Oh damn, ripped off. What a shot to the face. Oh damn. Knocked him quite down. And here we go now. Try oh, good lord. And look at look at this. Oh my gosh, he did this at the pay-per-view. 
but he's just imagining this is the imagination is quite an example of what she'll what he'll do to Candy Vega once he wins the title. But Brian S. Willis not gonna let that happen. He, he nails him with a hit meat hook. And now she'll scroll straight for the arm break. And remember, this is the first, this is a submission match. This is only a submission style of the match. So if you tap, you you either tap or snap. I ain't talking about snapple. And look at now, it escapes with barely with an arm on his own body. And there here we go. Northern Light Souffle. My goodness, we are I hope Ohio is being getting the well-deserved matches that we've been putting on for these guys, for everybody in attendance. Because this is quite big. This is quite big for a match like this to even happen. And look at this. Oh, it's stretching. Oh, breaking those fingers and all oh, right into the back. These guys are going to torture one another. This is going to use the steel... This is kind of a two-on-one handicap match because they could use the steel cage as a, a partner of their own, as a weapon as well. And look at this. Oh, damn. Scraping the boot on the face. Trying to clear up some blood. And, Mike, and Brian Ezra has been out for blood. Oh, shot to the head. Brian Ezreal is the World Heavyweight Champion, but how long could he stay as the World Heavyweight Champion? How long can he last? And this could be right now. Oh, what a beautiful vertical souffle dropping him down. And now he's going to call off his shots over here. What's going to happen for Brian Asriel? What's going to have mind? Got him into the corner. Oh, my goodness. Michael Wolf in trouble right now as we speak. And here we go. Well, he can't escape the caves. This is not escape only, but he's going to use this for lever. Oh, and uh, he kind of missed the shot. But he's going to redeem himself. A quietly done. So right now into the corner. Roll we'll rush off. Back. Michael Wolf with a knee hook of his own. You know how dedicated. You know how fire in his eyes. You know how he wants that title back. He's confused at everything. He asked for this immediately. That he wanted the title right back on his shoulders. And he could do it. But Brian Asriel, he's going to prove that he's a fighting champion. And you know, imagine, he still has time to him to get that opportunity to invoke his rematch clause and still make history if he can come out as a World Heavyweight Champion tonight. If he can survive the structure. And here we go, and Michael Wolfer now in firing, in fury. He'll have no fury over the, the Wolf as he's driving him to the canvas. And Michael Wolf is going to bring as much pace as he could possibly can. And here we go now, trying to go for the Wolf Matters, but no, Brian Asper with the back elbows. Very nicely does, goes with the back behind, could enter here, here. Lipka! And remember, he can't pin him though. He's got to submit him. And he's going to do that right now. As he can't go for the ropes. But look at Michael Wolf. Smart. Very smart on his end. And it looks like go for the back behind. But oh, very sweet on his feet. As Brian Asriel doing as much as he can. And he's going to use the case for the lever. No. Ooh, right onto the heart. And we're seeing a dangerous side from Brian Asriel. Brian Asriel is slowly turning into a. Just the dis dysfunctional, an ego maniac, a psychotic person, and he's unleashing his demons onto Michael Wolf. And Michael Wolf is doing a lot of dirty things, but My you gotta give Michael Wolf credit. He will do anything to get his hands back on that title. He become he can become. Well, actually, we have never had a two-time world heavyweight champion. Like, hey, Brian Asriel can be making history here tonight. If Brian Azrael wins, then he could be a two-time BCW World Heavyweight Champion. Oh my goodness. And how much, how much would it mean to these guys? And look at this now. Brian Azrael getting mud holes stomped by the Wolf. And there we go. Brian Azrael got to fight with much of his life of his own. Look at the rem shots. These guys are exchanging blows. Fighting with West right And here we go. Oh my gosh. I think these guys are struck. Showing a bit of strong style. And what Michael Wolf? What does he have in mind? Is he gonna go for a go to a submission hold? You know, Brian Asriel goes for the turnaround from behind. Side brush and leg sweep. Bringing down the Wolf Man. That's gonna mean for Michael Wolf. Here we go now. Driving him over the haymaker to sends him to the corner. What is he gonna do from here? Oh, it turns him around. This is exactly gonna go. Oh, and it goes for a mean hook. 
clobber in the back, doing as much damage as he could do on him. Oh, the elbow! Shot him off, drop kick with perfection. And the crowd is on their feet for Brian Azrael. The heart and soul. And then just gets stomped on with a heartbreaking knee hook again. And Brian Azrael once more playing possum and goes for his knee hooks as well. And look at this there. He's going to go for a submission hold right here. No. Brian Azrael is quite smart. But again, using the steel cage as a weapon. Using the steel cage as a boost. And then what can we see here from, from the top row? Drop kick. Nailing him down. Let's go. Michael Wolf in trouble now. Gets right back up. Sends him over the hip toss. And now what's it Michael Wolf going to do for here? Is he going to use the cage for whatever for type of punishment that you can do in the scrap chop? This scrap chop could be. I hope there's not even nail. Any nails? Any type of. Uh, oh, he's here now. Oh my gosh, into the cage. Not even busted wide open. This is quite crazy. And look at that now. Cobra car. And again, go for it one more time. But Michael Wolf instead immediately gets him off. Brian Asriel, we're looking at right now, oh, and it drops him the, onto the back of the cabinet. We're looking for history-making moments right now. We could be seeing either the first dual champion, or we could be seeing the first ever two-time heavyweight champion. This could be a sight to see. And now we're here now from the top rope. Brian Asriel, one more time, crossbody. Dropping him right down really nice. And Brian Asriel has got to wonder, what does he got to do? What does he have to do? The plan up. And he knows exactly what he's going to do. Rip cold from out of nowhere. Back behind him. Michael Wolf counters it though. He's going to turn him around. Oh, damn. Oh, my goodness. Give him a haymakers. But no. Turns the returns the favor. Off the rubs into the corner. Goes the main hook. No. Drops him in the main hook of his own. As much as much as he could do. But look at this now. Going for a modified submission right here. Going to pull the legs. Going to try to pull out of the socket. Trying to, he doesn't even, doesn't even tap, but he stays in for survival. And what's this here? They're going to go for another patented side rush in late sweep. My goodness. And there we go now. Boom! Shot to the face. And you can see this one here from the eyes of the Michael Wolf. The feast in his eyes. And now here we go. Gordon's for Nover. Oh, he connects it. If he locks his submission, he could well become the new champion. He got it locked in again, but no, Brian Asriel fights out it some more. But now here we go, all from out of nowhere. Here we go for a neck breaker, but no, fights him off. Oh, look at that! A kick, dropping him down. Oh my gosh, the crowd is on their feet. They don't even know who to root for. We got 50-50 for Michael Wolf and 50-50 for Brian Asriel for the World Heavyweight title. This is the first ever World Heavyweight title match. No, second time. Oh, look at that right there. Playing a little mind games with him. Uh oh. And what's this here now? Gonna play. He's gonna make him humble. Brian Azrael is gonna stay in it. He doesn't want to lift it. Oh, he's a forced to tap out. Michael Wolf has done it. We got a new world champion here in BCW. Two time Michael Wolf. The cage being raised up. And what a fight. What an absolute fight. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Who's coming down there? Oh, boy. Justin Payne has made his decision. He knows who he sees. And you can tell from inside of his soul, his side of that mask is an angry, pissed off son of a bitch. Hey, look at this now. These guys are now chaotic brawl. This has been what has been happening for months, built up for months. And Michael Wolf has taken that spot away from his spotlight from Justin Payne. Look at Michael Wolf acting like a coward. Doesn't know what any part of Justin Payne. Michael Wolf is the reason Justin Payne is in their cheeseburger world order. It is not going to have anything happen. Boy, look at it. Joey Scampoli. He's cheeseburger world order helping out Michael Wolf. And now the, oh, who's who's putting down the cage? What is this, what is this about? This is just damn right crazy. This, this is all cheeseburger world order's plan. This is all a setup. Justin Payne has done this over himself. Oh my gosh. What a low blow to Michael Wolf and Justin Payne is getting every payback 
and you know payback's a bitch for Michael Wolf. We're we're running out of time. Good night, everybody.